this will be acceptable to you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Come bless the Lord, all ye children of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord and bless the Lord come bless the Lord for oh, your children of the Lord who stand by night in the house of the Lord lift up And bless the Lord. Praise the Lord always. Praise the Lord always. Praise the Lord with all my heart. Praise the Lord with all my heart always. Praise the Lord. Praise Him always. Praise the Lord always, always. Praise the Lord with all my heart. Say the Lord with all my heart always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. My Lord is good. He's good to me. And it's good to you. so good my lord is 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 so nice my lord is so nice my lord is so nice my lord is so good my lord is so good my lord is so great my lord is so good 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 my Lord is so good, my Lord is so good, my Lord is so good. My Lord is so good, he's so good, my Lord is so good. My Lord is so good, my Lord is so good. The Lord reigneth, let the earth tremble. The Lord reigneth, let the earth tremble. Our God reigneth in his palace. The Lord reigneth like the earth tremble. Oh, hallelujah. 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 It's a heavenly language. It's a heavenly language. Oh, it's a heavenly language. It's a heavenly language. Hallelujah! 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 Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Unto you, Alleluia, Alleluia, Seek ye, 
seek him first and his righteousness all of the things hallelujah and man shall not live by bread alone but my every word that proceed out of mouth of the Lord hallelujah hallelujah thank Jesus is the way that truth and the life. Whosoever coming to him shall never die. Oh, yes. The holy way and the life. Lord Jesus is the way, the holy way to God. Whosoever coming to him shall never die. Lord Jesus is the way, is the truth and the light. If you come to him tonight, you will never die. Oh, yes. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the way. Jesus says, the holy way is the way, the truth and life. Jesus says, I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take the cross and follow, follow me. Where he leads me, I will follow. I will follow. him all the way I'll go with him through the garden I'll go with him through the garden I'll go with him through the garden I'll go with him with him all the way where he leads me I will follow Will you follow? I'll go with him through the judgment. I'll go with him through the judgment. I'll go with him through the judgment. I'll go with him, with him, all the way, where he leads me, I will follow, I will follow, I will follow. Tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is 
calling, calling for you and for me. Come home, come home, come home. You who are with me, oh. And as little and darling, Jesus is calling, calling for Sina, come home. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. Have you decided? Don't know what joins me, still I will follow. Don't know what joins me, still I will follow. Don't know what joins me, still I will follow. No tiny back, no tiny back, no tiny back. Have you decided? I've made up my mind The cross before me The world behind me The cross before me The world behind me The cross before me The world behind me No turning back no tiny back, no tiny back. Have you decided? I have decided. Follow, follow. I will follow Jesus anywhere. Anytime I will follow him, follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere he leads me, I will follow him, follow. I will follow anywhere we you follow. Jesus, anywhere, anytime, I will follow on. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere he leads me, I will follow him. Follow, follow. When my Savior calls, I will answer. When my Savior calls, I will hear him. When he calls for me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere working for my Lord. I'll be somewhere. Oh, yes, I'll be somewhere. Working for my Lord, I'll be somewhere, I'll be somewhere. Oh yes, I'll be somewhere, working, I'll be somewhere, working, I'll be somewhere, working for my Lord, I'll be somewhere, I'll be somewhere. When he calls 
when my Savior comes, I will answer. Will you hear when he says, Follow me? I will answer. I'll be somewhere. Oh, I'll be somewhere. I'll be somewhere. I'll be somewhere.
the pious I pray. I pray every day deeper, deeper in the blood of Jesus daily lets me grow School of wisdom, more of grace to know. Oh, dear, deep by it, I pray, Lord, every day. You are precious. Blessed Holy Spirit, take me deeper still, till my life is only lost in Jesus, and His perfect will, oh deep, quiet I pray. Deeper, though it cause a trials, deeper let me go. Rooted in the only love of Jesus, let me fruitful grow. Oh, deep. Yes, I pray. Lord. I want to be a doer, a doer of your word. I want to be a doer. Lord, I want to be a doer. I want to be a doer. Lord, to be a doer. I want to be a doer. Lord, I want to be a. I want to be a doer. I want to be a doer. I want to be a doer. Lord, I want to be a. I want to be a doer. Open my eyes, O oh Lord. Open my eyes, O oh Lord. Open my eyes, O oh Lord. I am ready to. I want to welcome every one of you to today's Bible study. 
This is a Bible study that is made up of um, the regular old districts of uh, Ketu, Magada, and Shomolu, in addition to uh, old Ikeja for today. There are people that are here for the very first time, and they are special people. If you are one of them, we would like to identify you as you signify by putting up your hand wherever you are. Our ushers, uh, thank you, God bless you. Just put up your hand as the ushers are around you. They're going to give you a slip or a package that will help us to keep uh, engaging you and being a blessing to you. Please, our ushers should identify the people and attend to them first. Our Father and the Lord, the pastor of the church, would like me to welcome you and uh, counsel that this shouldn't be the last time that you are here. And as God has used him to bless millions of people across the world, you will not be an exception. Praise the Lord. Please let's listen to our announcements concerning our regular services, especially for those who are here for the first time. On Sunday, in the morning, we have Sunday worship service that starts at 7.45 a.m. And in the evening, we have the Home Caring Fellowship. Then on Monday, we have very enriching and enlightening Monday Bible study, as you can see today. And uh, the time is 6 p.m. We start a little earlier to pray, you know, with prayers. And then on Thursdays, we have the Thursday Revival and Evangelism Training Service, which also begins at 6 p.m. Uh, we are not always here. You need to check up with those who invited you for the details of these services as they apply to you. We want to also announce the big one that this month is the month of our retreats praise the lord so come 18th of this month to 21st where all roads lead to uh, deeper, uh, deeper life camp uh, deeper life conference center at um, lagos Ibado expressway please let's um, take the words out, do all we can to bring people, our friends, our members of our families and our acquaintances, visiting our acquaintances. Let's make sure that we bring all of them to DLCC for this great event. Praise the Lord. We are now going to rise as we give our offering. Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, in verse 7, it says, Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. As you raise your offerings, tithes, or pledges, let's pray. Father, we thank you because you have given us the privilege to give. We're asking and praying, Lord, that this token that we have brought, you will use it, Lord, to advance your work on earth in Jesus' name. And you will bless the pockets and purses from where this is coming. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Please, our ushers and the leaders are passing the bags. Just quickly put your offering or tithe or pledges.
Please let's quickly do that so that we can continue with the service. Praise the Lord. We're going to sing from our hymn book, the Gospel Hymns and Songs. And we're, he we're singing hymn number 161. Gospel Hymns and Songs 161. Who will be the next? Who will be the next to follow Jesus? Who will be the next is cross to bear? Someone is ready. Someone is waiting. Who will be the next? A crown to wear. Who will be the next to follow Jesus? Come and bow at his precious feet. Who will be the next to lay every burden down at the Father's mercy seat? Who will be the next to follow Jesus? Who will be the next to praise his name? Who will swell the chorus of free redemption? Sing Alleluia. Praise the Lamb. Who will be the next? Who will be the next? Who will be the next to follow Jesus? Who will be the next to follow Jesus now? Follow him and follow Jesus now.
Today we're going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we're asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We're asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The Book of Psalms. The Book of Psalms. Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle, they kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law and forget his works and his wonders that he had showed them. Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through and he made the waters to stand as an heap. In the daytime also he led them with a cloud and all the night with a light of fire. He claved the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as out of the great depths. He brought streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Yea, they spake against God. They said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Therefore the Lord heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob and anger also came up against Israel because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them of the corn of heaven. Man did eat angels' food. He sent the meat to the full. He caused an east wind to blow in the heaven, and by his power he brought in the south wind. He rained flesh also upon them as dust, and feathered fowls like as the sand of the sea. And he let it fall in the midst of their camp, round about their habitations. So they did eat, and were well filled, for he gave them their own desire. They were not estranged from their lust. But while their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. For all this, they sinned still and believed not for his wondrous works. Therefore their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble. When he slew them, then they sought him. And they returned and inquired early after God. And they remembered that God was their rock and the high God their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth and they lied unto him with their tongues. For their heart was not right with him. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath, for he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away, 
and cometh not again. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. How he had wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan, and had turned their rivers into blood and their floods that they could not drink. He sent divers sorts of flies among them, which devoured them, and frogs which destroyed them. He gave also their increase unto the caterpillar, and their labor unto the locust. He destroyed their vines with hail, and their sycamore trees with frost. He gave up their cattle also to the hail, and their flocks to hot thunderbolts. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. He made a way to his anger. He spared not their soul from death, but gave their life over to the pestilence, and smote all the firstborn in Egypt, the chief of their strength in the tabernacles of Ham, but made his own people to go forth like sheep, and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. And he led them on safely, so that they feared not, but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. And he brought them to the border of his sanctuary, even to this mountain, which his right hand had purchased. He cast out the heathen also before them and divided them in inheritance by line and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. Yet they tempted and provoked the Most High God and kept not his testimonies, but turned back and dealt unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow, for they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. When God heard this, he was wroth and greatly abhorred Israel, so that he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent which he placed among men, and delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. He gave his people over also unto the sword and was wroth with his inheritance. The fire consumed their young men, and their maidens were not given to marriage. Their priests fell by the sword, and their widows made no lamentation. Then the Lord awaked as one out of sleep, and like a mighty man that shouteth by reason of wine, and he smote his enemies in the hinder parts, he put them to a perpetual reproach. Moreover, he refused the tabernacle of Joseph, and chose not the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, the Mount Zion, which he loved. And he built his sanctuary like high palaces, like the earth which he hath established forever. He chose David also his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds. From following the ewes great with young, he brought him to feed Jacob his people, and Israel his inheritance. So he fed them according to the integrity of his heart, and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. Psalm 79 O God, the heathen are come into thine inheritance. Thy holy temple have they defiled. They have laid Jerusalem on heaps. The dead bodies of thy servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of the heaven, the flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the earth. Their blood have they shed like water round about Jerusalem, and there was none to bury them. We are become a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and derision to them that are round about us. How long, Lord, wilt thou be angry forever? Shall thy jealousy burn like fire? Pour out thy wrath upon the heathen that have not known thee, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name. For they have devoured Jacob, and laid waste his dwelling place. O oh, remember not against us former iniquities. Let thy tender mercies speedily prevent us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O oh God of our salvation, for the glory of thy name, and deliver us, and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is their God? Let him be known among the heathen in our sight by the revenging of the blood of thy servants which is shed. Let the sighing of the prisoner come before thee. According to the greatness of thy power, preserve thou those that are appointed to die, and render unto our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom their reproach, wherewith they have reproached thee, O Lord. So we thy people and sheep of thy pasture will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. You have just listened to the Bible reading 
and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray.
times and long If by chance we are wrong For we travel but once on this way The danger is great If we miss the great great And the past will be Praise the Lord. I welcome every one of you to the Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. And the blessing of the word will touch your life. And whatever your requests are, the Lord has answered your prayer. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for the gathering of your people. Thank you because your word will do good in every life today. And we ask, O oh Lord, you grant us all the benefits in the word in Jesus' name. Keep us awake. Help us to understand. And let what we understand work effectually, effectively in every heart tonight in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're coming to Mark chapter 2. We've been studying from the gospel according to St. Mark. And now today we're in chapter 2, reading from verse 13 to verse 17. Mark chapter 2, reading from verse 13. And he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitudes resorted unto him, and he touched them. Verse 14, and as they passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom, and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. When the scribes and Pharisees saw, when they saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, 
How is it that ye eatest and drinkest with publicans and sinners? When Jesus had it, he says unto them, They that are whole need no, have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Those are the verses we're looking at today. And you'll find that Jesus Christ continued teaching. At the end of verse 13, it says, And he taught them. And then after passing through that, he saw Matthew, who is called Levi. And he called him, and he said, Follow me. And immediately, without wasting time, and without being plagued with the problem of indecision, he decided, and he followed the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Matthew, Levi gathered together, publicans and sinners, like he had been, so that Jesus Christ will speak to them, and teach them, and show them the way of the kingdom. The Pharisees and the, and the scribes, they saw that, and they murmured, and they criticized, and they asked, why? How is it that the Lord, the Master, was eating and drinking with the publicans and sinners? And then Jesus brings out a very great lesson and said, They that behold have no need of the physician, but they who are sick. As it was true then, it is still true today that those who are sick need the physician. And then he said, I came not to call the righteous, that means the self-righteous, the superficially righteous, those who think they are righteous in their own strength, in their own life, and by their own power. I came not to call them, I came to call the real sinners to repentance, regeneration, and eventually to heaven. Those are the verses we're looking at. The message tonight is the immediate response of a willing heart. The immediate response of a willing heart. He called Matthew. He had a willing heart. And he responded immediately. We're, divided, we're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, the commitment and consecration of concentration of our Savior, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, had a commitment. He had a focus. He had a purpose. He had assignment. And that assignment, he concentrated on the commitment and the concentration of our Savior. Point number two, the conversion and consecration of his soul. You see Matthew here, his soul, a sinner, but his soul, and then the Lord called him, he rose up, he followed the Lord, that's his conversion, and then he gathered the people together, that was his consecration, the conversion and consecration of his soul. And then we come to the third part, point number three, the continuation of his commission. The continuation of his commission despite the scribes. The scribes were there to criticize. The scribes were there to oppose. And the scribes were there to find fault. But all the same, Jesus continued in his commission of calling sinners to repentance. We're coming to point number one, the commitment and concentration of our Savior. We're reading from chapter 2, verse 13. And he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude restored unto him, and he taught them. Underline that word in your Bible, taught. He taught them. He taught them. As you think about that verse, you might be wondering, what did he teach them? Why did he teach them? How did he teach them? And what was his purpose for teaching them? As we look at that, and he taught them. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, what he taught them. It's not enough to just say he taught them. We have to know, we have to understand. When he opened his mouth and began to open the scriptures of the people, 
what did he teach them number one what he taught them number two why he taught them what was his goal if you're a teacher of the word you'll have a goal if you are expanding expounding the word of god to people there's a reason why you're doing that there is a purpose why he taught them how did he teach them number three there how he taught them you see, the, what you teach is not enough. There must be the way you teach and how it is that you have taught. Let's look at number one, what he taught them. We're coming to Matthew chapter 5. In Matthew chapter 5, I read from verse 2. Matthew chapter 5, and we're reading from verse 2. We're looking at what he taught them. Mark says, and he taught them and i will want to follow through and follow the lord jesus christ and follow his ministry what he taught them matthew chapter 5 i read from verse 2 and he opened his mouth and taught them he opened his mouth and taught them saying blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven he was teaching about the kingdom of heaven how to enter the kingdom of heaven how to enjoy the kingdom of heaven how to partake of the benefits of the kingdom of heaven and how to continue in that kingdom of heaven until the very end blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven that's what he taught look at verse 4 blessed are they that mourn that's what he taught he taught them that when they have discovered they were sinners they will not gloss over it. They will not rejoice because they are sinners. They will not give excuse. All have sinned. All are sinning. And I'm just like every other person. No. They will mourn for their sin. They will be sorrowful sin. Blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. They will be comforted because God will forgive them. In verse 5. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth after they have been poor in spirit and they know they could not pay for their salvation and now they mourn because of their sin it says they'll be meek they'll be gentle they'll say why it not for the grace of god i should have been lost i am saved not by my strength not by my power not by my effort or my struggling i'm saved by grace alone because of that they are meek and you say blessed that day that do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled life in the kingdom is a life for passionately following after the lord and they are hungry and we're thirsty for the righteousness of god and it says in verse 7 blessed at the merciful for they shall obtain mercy as he looked at his congregation and as he looked at the sinners that came to listen to him they were hardy they were traditional they were religious and they cared for no other person but he said when you come into the kingdom he was teaching them and he taught them life in the kingdom makes us merciful in verse 8 blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god that's what he was teaching when mark says in verse 13 over there and he taught them he taught them the way into the kingdom and the life in the kingdom and the vision of the kingdom look at verse 20 in verse 20 is what he taught them for i say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the pharisees ye shall in no wise in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven it was him teaching them about the standard of the kingdom the expectation of the king and was telling them the tradition of the scribes and pharisees and the lifestyle of the scribes and pharisees and the religion of the scribes and pharisees that those things were not enough to get us into the kingdom except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and pharisees ye shall in no wise enter into heaven come to chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 24 chapter 6 verse 24 no man can serve two masters 
the Bible says, and he taught them. What was he telling them? He was telling them, a divided heart will not please the Lord. A divided heart will not remain in the kingdom. It was impossible, and it is still impossible to serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot, ye cannot. It's an impossibility. As it's impossible to walk on two roads at the same time, as it's impossible to swim in two different rivers at the same time, as it is impossible to walk forward and to walk backward at the same time, it's impossible to serve God and mammon. That's what he was teaching them. He was calling them to a decision. Make up your mind. You are going to serve God, serve him alone. You want to serve mammon and then perish, serve mammon alone. He told them the literal impossibility of serving God and mammon. What did he teach them? Look at verse 33. In verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. That's what he was teaching them. He was teaching them the way into the kingdom. Chapter 7 of Matthew, I'm reading from verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. That's what was teaching them. Was telling them tomorrow may be too late. Today is what you have. This moment is your chance. And if you're going to get into that kingdom that he was introducing to them, the way was open and the door was open. But they will enter at that very time. And he said, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go in thereat, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find age that's what he was teaching them he was teaching them so that they will know the way of the kingdom and they will take that way into the kingdom and they become partakers of the benefits of the kingdom of God in John chapter 8 Reading from verse 28, John chapter 8, reading from verse 28. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I, I am he. I am he. That's what was teaching them. He said, There's no other Savior, I am he. There's no other voice of God, I am he. And there is no alternative in getting to the kingdom of God. I am he. That's what was teaching them. The way, the truth, and the life. You will know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my father has taught me. The question is, what did he teach? What was he teaching them? What the father had taught him. What the father had given to to show him and that is what was given to the people and he said but as my father has taught me I speak these things and he that sent me is with me the father has not left me alone for I do always those things that please him look at verse 30 it says as he spake these words many believed on him then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if he continued, that's his teaching, he taught conversion, he taught continuity, and he taught going on unto the end, enduring to the end. If he continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. What did he teach them? The way into the kingdom. The grace for living in the kingdom, abiding in the kingdom, staying in the kingdom on chapter 4. In Mark chapter 4, I read from verses 1 and 2. Mark chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. And he began again to teach. That was his concentration. That was his commitment. He began again to teach 
by the seaside and there was gathered unto him a great multitude so that he entered into sheep and sat in the sea and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land and he taught them and he taught them and he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine and then it continues look at verse 10 in verse 10 and when he was alone they that were about him were the twelve asked of him the parable and he said unto them unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God why did he teach them that they might know the mystery of the kingdom of God why did he teach them that the things that were covered and the things that were not known to all the people will be known to them that they will know the mystery the secret of the kingdom of God but unto them that are without all these things are done in parables that seen they may see and perceive not and hearing they may hear and not understand lest at any time they should be converted that's the purpose of the teaching lest at any time all those pharisees all those sadducees and all those scribes that closed their eyes they didn't want to see lest they should be converted lest i should their sins should be forgiven them that's the purpose why did he teach so that their sins will be forgiven why did he teach so that they be set free from their sin why did he teach so that they will be converted we're coming to luke chapter 24 and i'm reading from verse 27 march uh, luke chapter 24 we're reading from verse 27 and beginning at moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself many of those people israelites and jewish people they had read the old testament how many times they have read the psalms how many times they have read genesis and exodus how many times they have read also to malachi how many of them had their own readings schedule that they read the old testament through a one year and yet when christ came they couldn't see jesus in the old testament but now why did jesus teach them so that they will know that those scriptures were reaching concerning him he opened their understanding he expounded the scriptures to them of the things concerning himself look at verse 44 in verse 44 and he said unto them these are the words which i speak unto you which i speak unto you while i was yet with you when i was teaching you before my death before my burial before my resurrection when i was still with you and i was teaching you and teaching you and teaching you these are the words that i taught you while i was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of moses and in the prophets and in the psalms concerning me look at verse 45 then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures that's the reason he was teaching he wanted the people not just to have a closed book a book of mysteries a book they couldn't understand and he taught them what did he teach them he taught them about the qualification of entering into the kingdom he taught them about the grace of abiding in the kingdom he taught them on the strength of continuing in the kingdom till then why did he teach them so that their sins will be forgiven so that they'll be converted why did he teach them that they will know the mysteries of the kingdom why did he teach them that they will know that the scriptures of the old testament were fulfilled Filled in him so that their eyes of understanding will be open and then we're coming to john chapter 8 john chapter 8 why 
did he teach them and why is he teaching us this the reason why he's teaching us in john chapter 8 verse 24 john chapter 8 verse 24 i said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. He was telling them the only way to come alive and the only way to have eternal life is to believe that I am he, I'm the Christ, I'm the Savior, I'm the Messiah, I'm the one the Heavenly Father has sent to bring life unto you. And if you don't believe that, you will die in your sins. It was uh, something he made very clear so that they will not go ignorantly to the great beyond. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, then said Jesus unto them, when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he. I am he. There's no other person. This one is greater than the first Adam. It's greater than Moses. And it's greater than Abraham. And it's greater than all the prophets of the Old Testament. I am he. And there's no other person like me. That's what he was teaching them. If you are taught by the Lord and you don't get that, you've not got the reason why he taught. He said, you'll know that I am he and that I do nothing of myself, but as my father has taught me, I speak these things. Look at verse 32. Why did he teach them? What's the purpose of teaching them? Verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's the reason for teaching. He wanted them to know the truth, and the truth will make them, set them free. Look at verse 46. Which of you convinced me of sin? If I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He expected them to believe, because it's in the believing that I am he. I'm the one sent by the Father. I am the Savior. There's no other Savior. It is in putting their faith and trust in Him. They'll have everlasting life. Number one, what He taught them. Number two, why He taught them. Number three, how He taught them. How He taught them. I want to come to Matthew chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 28, what he taught, why he taught, and how he taught. In Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 28, and it came to pass when Jesus had ended these things, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. He taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. How did he teach? He taught like the author. He taught like the author. And he taught as one having authority. Maybe you had the experience, you are in a school. And there's a particular textbook that you're using in the class. And the teacher is trying to wade through that textbook. And one day, the uh, inspectors came to the school. And one of the inspectors happens to be the author of the book you are using uh, for that subject. And he saw the teacher teaching, uh, and he said, can I help you out? And he began to teach without even looking at the book. And he taught the students, and the students said, Aha, now I understand. All the time the teacher was laboring, I didn't understand. And then they checked up. They knew his name, and they look at the back of the book, and they saw that the names are the same. No wonder he is the author of 
this book were you seen in class and because he's teaching like an author is teaching authoritatively in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word was made flesh and he dwelt among us the author of the word the one that was there before the word was written and the one that is speaking to us now with authority is the author of the word that's why the scribes could not match him that's why the Pharisees could not match him because he taught with authority he was the author of the word he taught differently he taught assuredly he taught convincingly he taught convictingly it convicted them because this is the word that is preaching the word unto us we're coming to mark chapter two chapter four mark chapter four and i'm reading from verse two how he taught them mark chapter four looking at verse two and he taught them many things by parable and said unto them in his doctrine said unto them in his doctrine look at verse 33 in verse 33 and with many such parables speak he the word unto them as they were able to hear it as they were able to hear it jesus christ knew the hearts of the people he knew the level of the people he knew the understanding of the people he knew the people he was talking to and he knew the word and imagine the heart or the word and the word was the heart as they were able to hear it that's why they got it that's why they swallowed it that's why they believed it because he taught with knowledge and understanding let's look at the, let's look at um, luke chapter 23 luke chapter 23 and i'm reading from verse 5 luke chapter 23 we're reading from verse 5 and they were the more fear saying he stirs up the people teaching he stirs up the people teaching dull teaching will produce dull hearers and ignorant teacher will produce ignorant students but here comes jesus and he knew the word he was the word personified and he came to the people and he knew that the people needed forgiveness and he needed the comfort of the grace of god and they needed the freedom that the word will come to give them and he taught the people stirring up their hearts convincing them there was something on the inside of them that got stirred up they said yes i see that's the kingdom yes i see that's the way of the kingdom yes i see the picture of heaven is very clear and yes i see the way that leads into that kingdom and it was stirred up that's why it says he stirs up the people teaching throughout all jewry beginning from galilee to this place let's come to john chapter 7 john chapter 7 we're reading from verse 28 john 7 28 and he cried then cried jesus in the temple as he taught as he taught saying ye both know me and know whence i am i am not come of myself but he that sent me is true whom ye know not look at verse 37 now in verse 37 in the last day that great day of the feast jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink let him come to me and drink he presented the word 
and also he had the benefit of the world and when they came to him he is able to make the world come alive in their lives he that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water but they speak he of the spirit which they that believe on him shall receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said of a truth. This is the prophet, or capital P. He taught convincingly until they began to testify. There's no other one. Here is the one. This is that prophet. Look at verse 46. The officers answered, Never man speak like this man. Never man speak like this man. He taught authoritatively. He taught convincingly. He taught persuasively. And the people were drawn to him in his teaching. Point number one. The commitment and concentration of our Savior. He taught them. We're coming back to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. We've just studied verse 13. We'll come to point number 2 now. The conversion and consecration of his soul. We're reading from Mark chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 14. And he passed by. His, as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. And uh, he arose and followed him. That's his conversion. The conversion of Matthew. Conversion of Levi. Verse 15. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, Many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. And there were many, many publicans and sinners, and they followed him. He taught them. They were persuaded. They were convinced. They repented, and they followed him. Let's see two things here. Number one, the conversion of a sinner. The conversion of a sinner. Look at uh, that, verse 14. Verse 14, and as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom, and he said unto him, follow me. Two words, follow me. He's been there in darkness. Here comes the light of the world. Follow me. He's been there as a guilty sinner. And here comes the God and the Lord of all grace. And he said, follow me. He has been there in confusion. This work I'm doing, where will it end? Where will it end? Where will it land me? And here comes Jesus Christ that's able to transform his life. And he said, follow me. He wasted no time at all. And he arose and followed him. Maybe this is your first time of coming to the Bible study. And you are hearing the word of God. And your heart is saying, yes, that's right. Yes, yes that. that Jesus Christ is the very son of, yes, I can see that. Jesus is the savior. And then he calls you and he said, get up then and follow me. Come out of darkness and follow the light. And come out of your confusion and be converted and be yielded to the Lord. If you're going to, to do like Matthew, you rise up and immediately you'll say, I belong to Christ now. I give my heart to Christ now. I yield myself unto him. Follow me. And without wasting time, he arose and followed him. Maybe you've been following the Lord before, but you've come back and you're backsliding. And now you are hearing the word of God and it comes to you that Jesus is the only one. is the savior. is the restorer. is the one that can bring you out of what you are and what you have plunged yourself into. And it can bring you into restoration. If you're going to do like Matthew, you say, yes, Lord, I believe. You are a restorer of my soul. And I rise and I follow you 
you i pray will follow the lord in jesus name look at verse 17 jesus had when jesus had it he said unto them they that are whole have no need of the physician but they that are sick they that are whole the people who think they are all right without salvation the people who think they are all right without the grace of god the people who think they are all right in their own strength in their own power in their own endeavor in their own struggle and they think that they'll get to heaven by their own effort he says i've not called to call those people they are hypocritical people they are insincere people i've not come to call them but then he said i came not to call the righteous self-righteous but sinners to repentance he came to call sinners to repentance that's why Matthew responded immediately. That's why you are responding immediately. You are saying, I'm not going to go back the same with the same load of sin I came with. I'm not going to go back with the same blindfold that makes me live in darkness. All that is going to be taken away. And immediately as you receive him, as you accept him, and you're willing to live for him and live in him, the grace of God will come to you and all the darkness will vanish away in jesus name look at luke chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 27 luke chapter 5 verse 27 he's still talking about the same thing as you have learned before matthew mark and luke sometimes they write about the same story but they give you different shades and different sides and uh, different details of the same thing we're reading about let's look at the details luke is giving us in luke chapter 5 uh, reading from verse 27 and after these things they went forth and he saw a publican named levi the same person sitting at the receipt of custom and he said unto him, follow me. He still, that's what we read before, but look at this now, verse 28. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. He left all, rose up, and followed him. You see, when you rise up to follow the Lord, your past life, your past sinful life, your past ignorant life, your past behavioral life, your past behavior, you leave everything behind, you burn the bridge behind you, you know that there's no way going back again. I've left all, I've abandoned all, I've thrown all away. I'm following Jesus Christ now as my savior and the only savior that's conversion and that conversion is necessary if we're going to get into the kingdom of god you'll get to the kingdom of god but you leave all behind all darkness you leave behind all sinful practice you leave behind all the nightclub you leave behind all the things that attach you to satan and to the world you leave everything behind and you take a definite decision and you say i am going to follow the lord without looking back he will receive you you'll be converted if you are converted already there'll be renewal in your life look at acts chapter three i'm reading from verse 19 acts chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 19 repent ye therefore and be converted you remember what jesus said i came to call sinners to repentance i came to call sinners to turn around and he says over here repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out at that time you turn away from darkness everything you did in darkness before everything is forgiven everything is blotted away at that time you rise up and you leave everything behind and you say i'm following the lord i'm following the from this point on he is my lord he is my savior all the things you did before that time everything will be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. And then he goes on to say in verse 26, unto you, first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away, in turning away every one of you from his iniquity 
You see, each person has his own peculiar iniquity. The drunkard has his iniquity of drinking, and the smoker has his own iniquity of smoking. And those who go on hems and marijuana, they have their own peculiar way of iniquity. Those who gamble, they have their own way of iniquity. And those who are into adultery and fornication, they have their own way of iniquity. Those who are into the world worldliness, they have their own way of iniquity. And whatever the iniquity is, here is what Christ has come to do. In the case of Matthew, he was a publican. But in the case of other people, they have, they, they have their own peculiar ways. And he comes to turn everyone away from his iniquity. That's the conversion. That's what happened to that man. That's what will happen to you. I said it will happen to every one of us. If it has happened already, the Lord confirm it in your heart, in your life, in Jesus' name. We're coming to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. Acts, chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 30. And the times of this ignorance, God winged arch. That means everything you've done in ignorance. I didn't know that was wrong. I didn't know that was wrong. God is willing to overlook everything. And I pray as you take the decision tonight, everything, every bad thing you did in the past will be overlooked in Jesus' name. But now commandeth all men everywhere to do what? To repent. Commandeth all men everywhere to repent conversion takes place we're coming to john chapter 8 john chapter 8 and i'm reading from verse 11 john chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 11 she said no man lord no man lord as no man condemned you because the scribes and the pharisees they caught her as if they themselves were angels in lifestyle and he came to jesus and said we caught this woman red hand in adultery and the law of moses says stone her what do you say and jesus said he that has no sin let him first cast the first stone and they went away one by one and that's what jesus said as anybody condemned you and she said no man lord and jesus said unto her neither do i condemn thee go and sin no more that's conversion. That's conversion. You follow the Lord, and now your life is totally different. You are a liar before you are no more a liar. And you are a gambler before you are no more a gambler. You are a drunkard before you are no more a drunkard. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creation. It's a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, how many things have become new? All things have become new. Look at verse 12. Then speak Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me, you see that, like Matthew, he that followeth me, like James and John, he that followeth me, like Peter and Andrew, he that followeth me, like you and I, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life shall have the light of life he calls everyone everyone that wants to follow him he calls us to repentance and that repentance uh, brings a conversion to our lives if somebody has been following after the lord before but he has not become a backslider something happened he didn't have enough grace to overcome what came to him and now he's come back what happens is still to have this same repentance and the repentance will bring him to restoration and the restoration will bring him to conversion james chapter 5 i'm reading from verses 19 and 20 james chapter 5 verses 19 and 20 brethren if any of you that's a brother that's a sister brethren any of you that's a child of god but not do air from the truth is gone astray from the truth and one converge him the backslider needs conversion 
the one who has gone astray into error, the one who has gone astray into a gang, and the one who has gone astray into a kind of a community and society that has influenced him and is not behaving like a sinner. He needs conversion. Look at that again. Be Brethren, if any of you do hear from the truth and one convert him, let him know, let him know that he which converted the sinner, that person that was any of you, a believer, a child of God, he became a backslider. It says, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. When you come to the Lord like that, all the multitude of sins, they're taken away. And as they're taken away, then you become a real child of God. Now, Revelation chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 2, we're reading from verse 4. Christ came to call sinners to repentance. It tells us, Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Nevertheless, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Your love for God, thou hast left thy first love. Your love for the truth, thou hast left your first love. Your love for commitment, for consecration, thou hast left your first love. Your love for everything that came from Christ, thou hast left thy first love. Your love for the church, thou hast left thy first love. Your love for heaven, your love for the kingdom, thou hast left thy first love. It says, remember therefore from whence thou art falling remember therefore from whence thou art falling and repent and repent he calls everyone he calls every believer that has gone down that has loved the first love that has lost the first zeal, that has lost the first commitment, that has lost the first consecration, it calls everyone to come back to that first love and to that fervent love. And it says, Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove the candlestick out of his place, except, tell me, Except thou repent. He wants repentance from everyone. He doesn't want us to do patch patch Christian life. He doesn't want us to say, I'm, I think I'm all right. I'm not really there, but I think I can manage. He doesn't want you to manage a backsliding life. He doesn't want you to manage a life that has left the first love. He wants you to come back to the origin. And he said, Except you do that, you will come and remove the can stick out of his place. Revelation, I'm reading here from chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, I read from verse 15. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou art cold or hot. There are some people, they are not here they're not over there. And they say, I'm trying to be in the middle ground. I'm trying to play it cool. I don't want to too much of my religion. I don't want to show too much of excitement and too much of zeal and too much of commitment and too much of consecration. The Lord said, I want to know where you are. I want to know if you are here hot or if you are there cold. Look at verse 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spill thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked i counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire this is spiritual it's not ornament that thou mayest be rich, the spiritual, that's not commercial. And white raiment, this is not fashion, this is holiness. White raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and annoy thine eyes, sir. This is not medicine, this one is grace of God. Thine eyes, thine eyes with eyes, sir, that thou mayest see as many 
as I love, as many as I love, as many as I want to take to heaven, and I love them so much, I don't want them to perish. I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore, and repent. And those who respond to those words of Christ, and they become zealous, and they repent, and they turn away from their sin, they turn away from their lukewarmness, and they come to take the fullness of the grace of God, conversion takes place. We're coming back to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. I'm reading now from verse 15. Mark chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 15 we see the consecration after salvation is consecration after salvation that's talking about Matthew already has repented already is converted and now we see his consecration we're looking at Mark chapter 2 verse 15 and it came to pass that as Jesus such at meet in his house in the house of Matthew and many publicans and sinners he had gone to call many publicans and sinners I met somebody come and meet him I saw the grace of God come and receive of the grace of God I met the Savior you must see the Savior I met that Jesus Christ is coming to my life a change has happened and you must have this taste of the change and so he called many publicans and sinners and they sat also together with Jesus and his disciples and there were many and tell me the rest of that verse tell me tell me the rest of that verse 15 I can't hear you. And they followed him. The same thing he had told Matthew. The same thing he told them. It was the consecration of this man, Matthew, that brought them together to hear the word of God and then to have a chance of following after the Lord. We're looking at Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. I read from verse 29. Luke chapter 5, verse 29. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them, wanting to give Jesus Christ opportunity to speak to them and to call them out of their sin and to call them to repentance. But their, their scribes and the Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus and Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. That was the congregation of sinners, and now Jesus Christ was calling them. You see what Matthew has done? That's similar to what that woman at the well did. Immediately she knew Jesus as Savior, knew Jesus as the one, the Christ, the Messiah. She left her water porch and she went into the town saying, come see a man that told me everything I did is not this, the Christ. Come to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 28. John chapter 4, verse 28. The woman then left her water pot and went away into the city and said unto the men, Come, see a man who told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. What consecration? You see the changed life of the woman. As you see the changed life of Matthew. That immediately each of them knew the Lord as Savior. They said, I'll not be selfish. I'll not keep this to myself. And they went to invite all the people. That was their consecration and commitment. And they brought them to Jesus. Look at verse 39. John chapter 4 verse 39. And many of the Samaritans of the city believed believed on him for the sin of the woman which he, testif which he testified he told me all that ever I 
did. We are coming to John chapter 10. Why did Jesus allow Matthew to call those people together so he could speak to them? Why did Jesus respond to those people that came from the city of Samaria that the woman had called John chapter 10 verse 16? John chapter 10 verse 16 All the sheep I have which are not of this fold them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd that's the reason why Matthew alone was not the one to get saved he was to get saved he got saved and then he was to bring other people other sheep I have not of this fold them I must bring and the woman at the well was not alone them I must bring others he must bring and you are not the only one to be saved your family you need to tell all the members of your family them I must bring you need to tell all the people in your community them I must bring we're coming to Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 verse 24 Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 verse 24 it says and the morrow after they entered into Caesarea and Cornelius waited for him and he called together his kinsmen and near friends. He called together his, near, his kinsmen, kinsmen and near friends. When you have the opportunity of hearing the truth, you'll not selfishly keep it yourself. If you're truly converted, consecration will follow. You'll bring other people, you'll tell other people, you'll invite other people, you'll sit with other people, and as they come, the world of God will enrich their lives as well. Look at verse 33. Verse 33. Immediately, therefore, I said to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, we are all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Cornelius had spoken to the we have come to hear the word of God. Cornelius has spoken to the people. They were to open their heart, open their mind, and they were to open their understanding to the word that Peter was going to bring to them. And they all did. And look at verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard the word. They heard it penetrated them, they believed, they accepted, they received, and the Holy Ghost confirmed Christian experiences in their lives. And they of the circumcision, which believed, were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that of the Gentiles also, the, on the Gentiles also, was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost for they heard them speak with tongues and magnified God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we, in the same way as we have done? They got saved, their names were written in heaven as well as we in the same way we have God Jesus prayed for their sanctification and they were sanctified and now the Holy Ghost came on them Cornelius and the people that he invited you can see number one the conversion number two the consecration we come to point number three now the continuation of his commission despite the scribes the continuation of his commission despite the scribes let's come to mark chapter 2 and i'm reading from verses 16 and 17 mark chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 16 and when the scribes and pharisees saw him each were publicans and sinners they said unto his disciples how is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners when jesus had it he says unto them did that behold they that are whole have no need of the physician but they that are sick i came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance uh, here we we'll see that he continued his ministry the pharisees were there 
the scribes were there they criticized the opposed but all that criticism and opposition will not stop him his commission must continue the same thing in our lives we're to follow after christ we're to follow after the example of christ you might uh, experience opposition and you might experience some contradiction of men but even then the commission must continue the commission will not die at your doorstep the commission will not die at your doorstep. It will continue with us in Jesus' name. As we look at these verses, number one, look at the condition of the scribes and the Pharisees. The condition of the scribes and the Pharisees. Look at that verse 16 there. And when the scribes and the Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they searched unto his disciples, how is it? that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners. But what's for their own condition? Uh, let's look at um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. They themselves did not have enough righteousness to take them to heaven. The righteousness they had was superficial, and they didn't understand. And they said, we are righteous, we'll never eat with those sinners, we'll never eat with those publicans. How is it that you disciples and you Jesus, the master of these disciples, you're eating with the publicans and sinners? Look at the condition of the scribes and the Pharisees. We're looking at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 20. Matthew chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 20. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. They were not in the kingdom themselves. They were not born again themselves. They were not new creatures in Christ themselves. They were still traditional sinners. They were still super, uh, superstitious sinners, and they were still religious sinners, and yet they thought everything was all right. Look at Matthew chapter 13, I'm reading chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 13, Matthew chapter 23, and we're reading from verse 13, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Want to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer permit, allow ye them that are entering to go in, stood at the door of the kingdom, and they prevented the Savior touching the lives of the people inside there that the people inside could not come inside their dungeon inside their prison inside their darkness could not come out and come into the kingdom and they themselves were not entering in and then the lord said in matthew chapter 23 from verse 27 Matthew 23 from verse 27 Want to you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites for ye are like unto white sepulchres which indeed appear beautiful outward they had outward religion outside religion but within are full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men but within, ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Look at verse 33. Ye serpents and ye generations of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? They were candidates of hell, and then they were saying, well, all right, how is it? He's eating with the publicans and sinners. How is he? He's preaching to them. But Jesus will not allow uh, these superficial, short-sighted sinners, scribes and Pharisees to hinder him in his great commission. His work still goes on. His work will go on in your life. No scribe will enter, uh, no scribe will hinder the work of God in your life in Jesus' name. Give me a good, good, deeper life. Amen. Amen. 
Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 52. Warn to you lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge, and ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in, ye hindered. They took away the key of proper interpretation of the word of God, and they misconstrued, they misinterpreted the word of God, and their interpretation will not allow them to enter the kingdom, and their interpretation will not allow others that want to enter to also enter, and they were the people complaining, saying, why is it that is eating of the publican and the sinners? I pray that those superficial, short-sighted, religious, traditional people will not hinder your entering into the kingdom fully in Jesus' name. Let's come back to Mark chapter 2. The second part now, the congregation of sinners and publicans. The congregation of sinners and publicans. We're looking at Mark chapter, Mark chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 15. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples and there were many and they followed him they followed him he was teaching them he had a congregation of publicans and sinners in matthew chapter 21 matthew chapter 21 the lord talks to us about them when they had the word of god let's see their response let's see how it how it uh, kind of uh, tallied with the decision of matthew who had called them together matthew chapter 21 reading from the start one without them twain we uh, did the will of his father they say unto him the first jesus says unto them verily i say unto you that the publicans and the sinners and the harlots go into the kingdom of god before you talking to the scribes and talking to the pharisees he said the publicans and the harlots the sinners and the publicans they go into the kingdom of heaven before you verse 32 for john came unto you in the way of righteousness and ye believed him not but the publicans and the harlots believed him and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward, that ye might believe him. They believed. I will not allow publicans and sinners to go beyond me, to go to the kingdom of heaven, and then I stay behind. You will not stay behind. I said, you will not stay behind. You will get into that kingdom in Jesus' name. Let's look at Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 10. In Luke chapter 18, verse 10, here the Lord gives us a parable that he drew from the situation at that time. Luke chapter 18, verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a publican and the Pharisee stood and prayed those with himself God I thank thee that I am not as other men are extortioners unjust adulterers or even as this publican I fast twice in the week and I give tithes of all that I possess that's all his religion, but not born again. But the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven. And he smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. He recognized himself as a sinner. He accepted he was a sinner. He demanded mercy and forgiveness and salvation as a sinner. He was saved. If he was saved, you'll do like that you'll be saved in jesus name verse 14 i tell you 
this man went down to his house justified rather than the other the publican became justified rather than the pharisee for everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted now number three the commission of our savior and prince the commission of our savior and prince we're coming to mark chapter 2 mark chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 17 mark chapter 2 verse 17 when jesus had it he says unto them they that are whole have no need of the physician but they that are sick i came not to call the righteous on but sinners unto repentance he came to call the sinners to repentance luke chapter chapter 19 in luke chapter 19 look at the commission of the lord jesus christ and that commission still remains with the body of christ even today luke chapter 19 reading from verse 10 thus for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost the son of man the lord jesus christ he has come to bring sinners to repentance and he has come to seek those that were lost luke chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 45 luke chapter 24 reading from verse 45 then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and search unto them thus it is written and thus he behooved christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at jerusalem it started then but it still continues repentance remission removal forgiveness freedom from sin will continue until he comes again and if anybody is there tonight that has not repented anybody is there tonight that has that didn't know the way into the kingdom the way into the kingdom is made plain now come out of darkness come out of sin believe on the lord jesus christ all your past will be forgiven and then with that repentance and faith in christ there will be salvation with that salvation you're getting ready you'll get to the kingdom of god i will be there second peter chapter 3 we're reading from verse 9 second peter chapter 3 verse 9 the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but his long suffering towards what is long suffering toward me is long suffering toward you not willing that any should perish not willing that i should perish not willing that you should perish you will not perish but that all shall come to repentance how many people to come to repentance all shall come to repentance what's repentance turn away from your past and turn to the lord and say lord i reject i repent all of my past i take you as my personal savior i believe you died for me on the cross of calvary save me lord save me now he will save you he says behold i stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and open the door of his heart i will come in and sup with him and abide with him is going to be in your heart today in jesus name if you are saved already you still invite him to take all the other vacant places empty places in your heart it he will fill your heart he saves, he sanctifies, he feels for the Holy Ghost, he heals, he delivers, it's all in all for us. Invite him, he will come in, your future will be brighter, better, greater than the past in Jesus' name. Did I hear any amen?
Rise up, rise up and tell him, Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for everything I've heard. I'm asking, Lord, that you come into my heart today. If you have never invited him, invite him now. He will come in. If you're a child of God, still invite him all the same and let him come in in a greater way, in a bigger way, and then do greater things in your life today, spiritually, morally, in your character, in your behavior. Let him give you greater grace and more grace he will do it he never rejects anyone whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved you are that whosoever today call on him is ready to enter in Brethren, this is the time to pray. You've heard the word. It's time for a response. God has spoken to you. It is time for you to speak to God. And your prayer this hour counts. Your attitude. What you make of God's word this moment is very, very important. Expose yourself to the Spirit of God this day so that the benefit of the world will rub in, will sink deep in you. Don't be so casual, detached. Make it personal. We have seen Christ. We have seen the kind of teacher Christ was. His word has always been convicting, convincing. That's the word we have had tonight. You need to commit yourself to the Lord. If Christ had come here physically this evening, this is what he would say to you. God will want you today to make the most of this knowledge you have got. It's not for others, it's for you. It's all about the kingdom of God. Tonight we have seen the misery, the mystery of the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom, the demand of the kingdom, what God expects you to have, to enter into his kingdom. Is that nothing to you? Do you want to remain outside the kingdom of God? You need to pray tonight. That's the essence of the teaching. That you may be brought into the kingdom. You may understand the principles of the kingdom. You can't stay on the fence. It is the hour of decision. You must make up your mind. You can't serve God and mammon. You must decide to follow. And Christ is calling men today. And he's telling you, follow me. God has given us his mind today. Follow Christ. We have seen those that got the same message. They left all and followed. 
Tonight, is there anything that you are still bargaining with God about? Is there anything you are still dragging, a, a, a God, a, a begrudging God? Give it all. Follow. There is serious prospect. There is blessing ahead of you. There is the kingdom ahead of you. There is life beyond the grave for you. If you follow Christ. If you remain where you are because of a girlfriend, you remain where you are because of illicit trade and what you are gaining, money. If you remain where you are because of pride, my brother, my sister, that is disastrous. Follow. They left all. Swallow your pride this evening and follow Christ. Decide to follow Christ. Don't dilly dally. Don't waste time. Don't wait to confer with flesh and blood. Go ask people whether you should follow. Follow. Tonight, make up your mind. Get converted. It's not by your power. It's not by your struggles. Just simply believing. They believed Christ. The commoners. The publicans. The hallows. And tonight, that's why Christ came. That he may seek that which was lost. To seek and to save that which was lost. Identify with this congregation. That's the only hope. If you continue to struggle in your sin, if you continue to pretend with your religion that is empty and leads, that leads nowhere. That will not profit you, my brother. Identify with this congregation of sinners. When you pray tonight and tell God, I am the guilty one. The death that Christ died was for me. The sacrifice he made was for me, for my sins to be cleansed, for me to have redemption. That's why Christ came. He will turn you away from your iniquities is the only savior thou shalt call his name jesus for he shall save his people from their sin tonight you can be saved open your heart to christ he says behold i stand at the door and knock if any man will hear my voice and we open the door I will come in my sister don't leave this place without opening your heart door for Christ to come in and change you and turn you from hardness and turn you from iniquity only he can do it but today he beats men repent. You need to turn away from sin, make up your mind, relinquish your hold on sin.
whatever peculiar sin you have been relishing in your life, relinquish it tonight. As you make up your mind to follow Christ. In the time of ignorance, God overlooked, but now has commanded all men everywhere to repent. Repent.